Hey there gang, and in this series I'm going to show you how to make the popular Wordle game with React. Alright then gang, so in this series I'm going to teach you how to make this game, Wordle, from scratch using React. Now if you don't know what Wordle is, then I guess you've either been living under a rock for the last six months or really struggling with your internet connection because it's been an online craze for a really long time now. And basically you have to guess a five letter word by typing on your keyboard. And as you do that, your guess appears on the screen. And if you press enter, then it's gonna submit that guess and check it. And it's gonna colorize the letters of your guess. So the letter becomes green if it's in the correct position in the solution, yellow if the letter is in the solution but not in the right position, and gray if the letter isn't in the solution word at all. And then we can have another guess on the next row using the information we just cleaned from the previous try. And also, that information is mirrored down here on a keypad so that we can see at a glance which letters we've already tried. And again, each letter we've found to be in the correct position of the solution at some point or other is colored green. Each letter we know to be in the solution, but we've not yet found the correct position of is colored yellow. And any letter we've tried but isn't in the solution at all is colored gray. So this is all the same kind of information that we get up here in our attempts, but it's just displayed in a different way. And that really helps when you're making more guesses in the future. All right, so just for fun, I'm going to carry this game on and try and figure this out. So we know that A is right here and T is in the word somewhere, but it's not here and it's not here. So it's going to be one of these two. So I'm going to try steal, even though I know E is not in the word at all. I just want to use this word to try and find out where T is and also if S and L are in the word as well. So let me press enter. All right, that's interesting. So T isn't here. So we know T has to go here and L is here. So it ends in T-A-L. So could it be petal? It can't be petal because the E's not in it. I'm going to try petal just to see if P is in it anywhere. No. Um, so what can we have? O, U. We could have A again because even though A has been colored green, it doesn't mean there can't be another A anywhere else. I'm going to try fatal. Press enter. No. Okay. So it's not fatal. What else could it be? Um, I'm going to try natal. Oh, there we go. Cool. Natal. Awesome. So it took me all the guesses, but I did get it. Awesome. So this is essentially what we're going to make ourselves from scratch using React. And the end product is going to look something like this. And this version that we're going to make contains all the same game logic, all the same kinds of animations. The keypad at the bottom, which colors the letters, is the same, etc. But there are going to be some small differences as well. Mainly, when you refresh this page, it's going to give you an entirely different solution to try and guess. Whereas on the official Wordle site, you only get one guess per day. You can't refresh the page to get a new one. And also on the official Wordle, you can click the letters of the keypad to enter them into the squares. But in our version, we're just going to stick with typing the letters instead. And that's going to keep the series a little bit short and snappier, but you can always add that functionality in your cells at the end if you wanted to. All right, so again, just for fun, I want to go through this and try and find the correct solution. So we know A is in the correct position. E is somewhere, but not here. I'm going to try putting the e at the end. So I'm going to do something like, I don't know, brave like so and pressing enter. OK, so we know B, A and E are in the correct position. Now I'm at an advantage because I created all the solution words. So I think I know this and it's blame. So if I press enter, yep, it is the correct word. Awesome. And then when we win, we see you win in a modal the solution word and how long it took us to get that word. Now, I just want to show you what happens quickly. If we refresh, we get a different word. And I want to show you what happens if we get the word incorrect. So let me just type in hello right here. OK, none of those are in there. Let's type in a load of junk. Oh, and by the way, if we try to add in the same word twice, press enter, it's not letting me do that. So that's another feature. And it's the same for the official Wordle game as well. We can't add the same word twice. Anyway, let's carry on with this. Add in a load of random letters. Look, we've got no matches here. This is crazy. OK, one match. All right, so if we don't get it right, we still get the pop-up right here. It says, never mind this time. 
and then the word ninja which is pretty cool because this is the net ninja and then better luck next time awesome so this is the game that we are going to create now before you go any further with this series i would strongly recommend that you have at least a basic understanding of react because that's what we're going to use to create this wordle application so i am going to assume at least a basic level of react comprehension I'd also recommend that you're comfortable with JavaScript and add a push a little bit of CSS as well, because quite frankly, if you don't know CSS and you're trying to build a game like this, then it's going to look pants and no one's going to want to play it. All right. And I've got all of those courses. I've got a course for React, JavaScript and CSS. So I'll leave links to all of those down below the video and you can check those out first of all. And one more thing. You might have noticed I've called this Lingo in brackets as well. And that's just a little nod to a game show called Lingo that we have here in the UK, which is essentially Wordle, but in a game show format. So I wanted to give a little nod to that as well. So to get us started, I've created a starter React project, which you can get from this GitHub repo right here, React Wordle. And I'll leave a link to this repo down below the video. So all you need to do is just select the lesson one branch from this repo, which is a basic, pretty empty React project. And to download it, just hit the green code button and then choose to download a zip folder of the project. Incidentally, this repo also contains the course files for every single lesson in this series. So if you wanna see or download the code for a specific lesson you can do just select that lesson branch from the branch drop down hit the green code button and then download a zip folder of that particular lesson all right so once you've downloaded that zip folder we want to unzip or extract everything from within it so do that first of all and then we can delete that folder and then if we open this up, we should see another folder called React Wordle Lesson 1. If we double click into that, we can see this is all of the source code right here. So this is the project folder. And I'm just going to rename that to React Wordle like so. And I'm going to open this up in VS Code by right clicking and then going to open with code. And then that's popped up on the other screen. This is our starter project. So I just want to quickly walk you through this project. If we open up the public folder, we can see we have all the public files, including the index file. This is what gets served to the browser. Not added anything there. If we open the source folder, we have the app.js file right here. This is the root component and we import the app.css. And in fact, to be honest, we don't even need this CSS file. So we can go ahead and delete that file. And inside the app component, we can delete that import as well because we're not going to use it. All of our CSS is going to go inside the index.css file. Anyway, this root component, dead simple, just a div with a class of app, and then inside that, an h1 that says Wordle, and then in brackets, lingo. So that's all of the template. And that's the only component we have at the minute. Now the index.css has a few styles for the body right here and a few styles for the H1. And that's all there is to it as well. So like I said, all of our styles are gonna go inside here. And then finally inside index.js, we can see right here, we import what we need at the top. And that includes this index.css file and the root component. And we render our application right here to the DOM, okay? So if we also look in package.json, and if we scroll down, we can see we have all of the dependencies right here, etc. all of these scripts. And we're gonna use one of these scripts now to start the application so we can preview it in a browser. So what I'm gonna do is open up the terminal and down here, I'm gonna say npm run start, which is this script right here. And that's gonna spin up a local development server so we can preview this in a browser. And obviously that didn't work because we need to run npm install first of all, because we don't have the node modules folder and the node modules folder is gonna include all of these dependencies right here. So we need to run npm install before we try to start the application. And then once that's all installed, we can run npm run start again to spin up that local development server. And then that should open this up in a browser, which we can see right here. So this is the starter application. Now, before we move on to the next lesson and start coding anything up, I just want to go over a few notes that I've made right here in the root app.js component. And these notes basically explain the different data that we need to track for this application and also the process of the game itself. And I want to go over this so that we have this kind of overview or end goal in mind and we know where we're heading towards because that makes actually coding the application a bit easier. So first of all, the data we need to track. 
Well, we need to track or we need data for the solution, the solution word. And that word is going to be a five letter string, for example, drain or brave or something else. So we need a bunch of words and we need a data source for those words. And we're actually going to talk about that in the next lesson. We also need to keep track of the user's past guesses. So every time a user types something into the grid and then hits enter, then that becomes a guess, right? That word. And we need to track those past guesses. So this is going to be an array of past guesses. Each past guess is going to be an array of letter objects, right? So this would be a guess right here. And each of these objects would essentially be a letter, right? Or represent a letter. So each object represents a letter in the guess word and each object looks like this. You see, we have a letter property, or in fact, this is probably going to be called key and that would be A, B, C or something else. And then the color of that as well. So how should it be colored on the grid? Should it be yellow if there's a partial match, green if it's an exact match or gray if there's no match, etc. So this is what our data for the past guesses is going to look like. And that's going to make it really easy to colorize our different words on the grid. We also need to track the current guess. So that's the thing that the user is currently typing in to the row. OK, so that's going to be a string and it can be any length between zero if they've not typed anything yet or five characters. OK, which is the maximum length of the string. We're also going to keep track of the keypad letters. So, you know, I showed you before we had a keypad at the bottom of the grid and that displays all the letters that we can use. And when we've used a specific letter, then it's going to colorize that. And that could be either green, yellow or gray again. Pretty much the same as this thing up here where we have colorized letters in the word. We're going to have the same kind of thing for our different letters at the bottom, the keypad, if you like. OK. And we also need to keep track of the number of turns. And that's just going to be an integer between zero and six. So every time we submit a new guess, it's going to go up one turn. So that's kind of the data we need to track. Now, down here, we have these notes on the game process. So this is how the game works. And I've just put this here so we can kind of refer to it if we need to when we're writing the code. So first of all, we're entering words into the grid, right? That's the first kind of step of the game. And a user is going to enter a letter and a square then is filled with that letter in the row. So when a user hits delete, it deletes the previous letter, right? And when a user hits enter, it submits the word. Now, if all squares are not filled with letters, then the word is not submitted. And if that word has already been used in a previous guess, then the word is not submitted as well. So these are two conditions whereby we can't submit the word. So once we've submitted a word, we need to check them. Now, each letter is going to be checked to see if it matches to a letter in the solution. And then based on that check, each letter is assigned a color based on its inclusion in the solution. So exact matches are where we have the correct position in the solution for the guess letter and they're colored green. Partial matches are where the letter is in the solution, but it's not in the correct position and they're colored yellow. And we have non matches, those not in the solution at all. And those letters are colored gray. So after we've done this check and we've kind of formatted that guess to give each letter of color, it's going to be added to the grid with those correct colors. And then the current guess is going to move on to the next row down. All right. And also after the move, the keypad letters are going to be updated as well in terms of their color. All right. So that's the process each move, if you like, each turn. And then after we've had a few turns, we need to end the game. And that happens when the guest word fully matches the solution and we get a modal to say, well done, or when the user runs out of guesses. And in that case, we're going to get a modal to say unlucky. So I thought I'd just put these comments right here so we can refer to them, go through them now. So we've got this general idea of where we're kind of going towards and also so we can refer to them as we go forward. And like I said, we're going to look at how we can get the solution data, all the different words in the next lesson. By the way, if you want to watch this entire course now without YouTube adverts, you can do. It's all up on the NetNinja website, netninja.dev. You can buy the course for $2 to get instant access to all of it, or you can sign up to NetNinja Pro and get instant access to all of my courses without adverts, as well as premium courses not found on YouTube, including my Udemy ones. That's $9 a month, and you can get your first month half price when you use this promo code right here. So I'm going to leave this link down below in the video description for you to sign up. And I really hope you enjoy this series. And please do not forget to share, subscribe, and like the videos. 
that really helps a lot and I'm going to see you in the very next lesson.